Welcome to Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. Hi, welcome to Ascension Integration. I'm Sandra Walter. This week I wanted to speak about light work. And before I get into that, let me touch on some of the amplifications that occurred this past week. Um, I'm sure that a lot of you felt that. And let me just define that first of all. Amplifications are a, a frequency increase that is anchored. And it has a lot to do with Gaia. Uh, whether you want to call Gaia Mother Earth or Lady Sophia or Terra, uh, whatever your term for Mother Earth is, it's her way of integrating these new frequencies, which in turn affect everything within and on her surface and around it. Now, an increase in frequency feels like a cleansing can get a little chaotic. You feel scattered or emotional for no reason. And even though sometimes it has to do with solar flare activity, a lot of times it doesn't. And this is something that we're integrating right now because as we go through the shift, we're noticing that these things are very unpredictable. We really have to get out of our linear way of thinking. We're very locked into trying to time things out, trying to find uh, methods for, for predicting what's going to occur. We really have to let go of that. And a lot of times when these amplifications are happening and this frequency takes a little jump, you're going to be searching for what is it, what is it, what is it? Oh, there's no flares today. Oh, there's no geomagnetic storm today. What's going on? You know, nobody's talking about it or whatever. Let's make sure that we understand that we are learning how to operate from the heart, from that feeling sense. So this is not about searching for the answer, searching for reasons, reasons, reasons. This is about learning how to feel the natural galactic cosmic frequencies that are happening here. We've been very isolated in this journey on these, very, on these many journeys on Earth because we've been dumbed down and, and just in this descended state. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just an experience. But as we come out of this, we have to let go of our linear, factual, very mind, ego, emotional level based thinking. And when these amplifications occur, it's a good opportunity to say, hmm, all right, I'm feeling something. Wow, I'm really scattered today, or I feel chaotic or emotional. And uh, that's going to continue for, for quite a while. So let's kind of get used to it and stop making it wrong or stop trying to find a reason. Because as much as this is a, a collective process, it's also very individual. So when those increases in frequency occur, it feels scattered. And then when we anchor it, it that's when we feel that shift to a new level. That's when we feel the frequency is really anchored into ourselves as well as the planet. Now, it's not going to be automatic for a lot of people. They're not going to understand, wow, I just, I know, something changed. And that's fine. That That's your experience. Like last Friday, the 13th, there was a new anchoring of something new. And you can feel it. You're like, hmm, I don't know, today something's happening. And I just feel great. And a couple days ago, I felt like crazy. And this is another side effect of the shift is some days feeling like, holy crap, I am going to lose it. <laughs> it's just too much. And then a few hours later, a moment later, a day later, a week later, you're like, okay, I got it. I understand. And this is, this is part of our evolution. So we need to kind of get used to this integration phase because it is ongoing and it gets closer and closer together as the shift goes on. These frequency jumps and this anchoring, the, the steps are, as we learned with the Mayan calendar, you know, they get shorter and shorter as we go up the pyramid. And now that we're sitting on the top going through the gateway, this stuff gets faster and faster as we go through. So there are, I just want to mention that there's many lightworker events this week. 
so there's a big event happening on Easter Island this Friday, the uh, April 20th, which is another anchoring of, of this um, energy. And there's a lot of intention behind that because April has been very important. I mean, everything's important, but April has been a, a real month of transformation for taking this to another level and really stepping out of that trying to find reasons and trying to find purpose and trying to find mission and this grasping and clutching we're really learning how to surrender this month I hope that a lot of you are going through that because um, I can definitely feel that that surrender to the fight of it is uh, is going away so Saturday the 21st is the new moon and every full moon and new moon children of the sun has a group meditation I highly recommend getting into some kind of group meditation, even if it's just within your own little village and you've got three people sitting in a room. You you really need to start tapping into that collective. Now, if you want to get into a large group like Children of the Sun, that's fine. You don't have to. Uh, sometimes I resonate with the material. Sometimes I don't. But tapping into that group avatar that they have created, that they have intentionally created, is is beautiful and it really does assist the planet and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later um, then of course Sunday is Earth Day now even though it seems like well it's just this this public thing that was created there is a lot of intention on that day around the globe to respect love and shift the earth to a better place so why not use that collective energy for your own stuff, for your neighborhood, for whatever events, but I highly recommend not sitting around and meditating all by yourself. Get out and do something. You know, this is this is a good chance for light workers to step into their community when their community is open to assisting the planet and get out there and shine your light. You know, this is this is a, a good chance to um, not only meet other people but to do a little spiritual coming out experimentation and uh, get out there and, and, you know, walk the talk. Now, in the next three weeks, we're going to see a shift in egoic structure. And that's kind of interesting. That's going to allow the, the mission question to clarify and all those emotional entities to kind of lose their grip if you've been doing your clearing and being diligent about that and realizing uh, it is just deities and entities and has nothing to do with the true me. The emotions are not you. I know I say that all the time and I'm going to say it again. <laughs> Mental levels, egoic levels, emotions are not you. And the way that they have been used and abused in uh, the last few thousand years has intensified this this clearing phase that we're going through right now because we're realizing, oh my gosh, it's not even me. And I know I always say, you know, if you're if you're still in the dark, get out of it. That doesn't mean that you're going to be happy-go-lucky 24/7. This is evolution. Of course, you're going to have a blue day from time to time, but that's a part of this amplification. That's a part of the frequency shift is that that stuff comes up and you you either learn how to cling to it or you learn how to breathe through it and go, all right, I know it's going to be fine in an hour or so, and you know what, I'm not going to even play with this. I'm going to step completely away from it. And that is the thing about surrender. And I want to give just a little bit of advice here. If, uh, you know, use your discernment with this advice, of course. But to surrender to all of those personal wars that you have going on. Whether it's a war with yourself, your body, other people, family monads, you know, work groups, soul groups, whatever. Surrender. Just try it for one week and see what happens. Because we feel like it isn't safe to surrender. No, that means that I lose. That means that I don't win. That means that the other guy is going to have a leg up or whatever. It's not, it's not about fighting, you know, this, this fighting with, with purpose and the emotions and the body vehicle and the external circumstances. 
just decide that you're not going to fight. Just surrender completely and see what happens. Show yourself what it feels like and what occurs when there is no fight. Uh, it's not helping anyway. I, I want to make that clear that when you're pushing back in an argument, when you're pushing back, when your your body wants to step up and show you something, and you're like, no, you have to behave as, as I want you to. If the same thing with family, the same thing with work, the same thing with ascension itself, when ascension is saying, you need to lay down or I'm going to take you out today, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to do what you're what you want to do and you push through anyway and exhaust yourself or you feel like maybe I should be doing something and instead you're like well I don't know I think I, I've been told that I have to lay down every time that I'm tired and you lay down and it doesn't feel right but you're going to do it anyway I mean any of these little things that you're kind of fighting rather than surrendering to what's going on what occurs is when you when you have a a war going on. And these wars, either with other people or with circumstances or emotional levels, we resist, we resist, we resist because we feel that we can control the situation. If I just control it a little bit more, then I'll win, you know, and it's very egoic. So if we're going to let go of, of this egoic level, and especially if this shift occurs in the next three weeks of uh, something new for the egoic levels, we want to make sure that we're welcoming it in. So what occurs is you, you get in these battles and you've got two sides shooting at each other. And what occurs with surrender is if one side stops completely, surrenders, gives up the war completely, you lose the dynamic of fight. You lose that loop endless loop of push, push back, push, push back, push, push back. It's nonsense. And when you step out of it, when one side surrenders, stops shooting, the other side is going to continue to shoot and shoot and shoot. And when they're, they're the enemy, uh, when the one who has stepped down doesn't shoot back, and not only that, but the bullets aren't even affecting them anymore, it has no effect. When, when, the, when the side that keeps shooting realizes that their shooting is having no effect, they have to either quit or destroy themselves because they realize that the, the fight is a deity. It's not your job to fight. It's not your job to fix it. And when one side keeps shooting and the other side has surrendered, eventually the side that is shooting will realize okay, it's not having any effect, wow, they're not falling down at all, and then all of that, that deities, that entity's anger and control and manipulation turns on itself, and it has no choice but to dissolve or move on. And that is exactly what we're getting into with the shift in consciousness, where it's all of these deities and entities that have attempted to control, 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 control are now losing their grip with the frequency. And as the frequency changes us to the point where we are surrendering to source, to our divine nature, the control and manipulation has no effect. So let's go ahead and amplify this right in our own life streams. Just try it for a week. Anywhere you've got a fight going on, anywhere that you have internal conflict going on, anything that's going on with the emotional levels, let's just surrender this week and see what happens. It's one week. It's seven days. You've probably been doing it for years. You've probably been fighting the same battles over and over again, either reproducing them, recreating them with different people or different emotional levels, but it's always the same thing. So give it up. Give it up just for a week. And surrendering doesn't mean being a dish rag. Oh, you can walk all over me. Of course not. This is, the, this is unconditional love that we're tapping into for the highest good. And right now, your highest good is stepping away from those battles in order 
to get the battle that is going on on this planet to dissolve. So right here, right now, in your own live stream, you have battles going on. We all do. And let's just try this for a week. Just surrender. Just say, you know what? I'm not participating. I am going to be peaceful and loving to myself no matter what. And that other person or that emotion can just, it, it's not having its way with you. It just has nowhere to go if you don't feed it, if you don't participate. So let's just try that. Even if it's some strange family or, or a office thing that you have going on where somebody is just riding you and it's been this battle, 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 especially with relationships. You stop pushing back, the other person has nowhere to push. Yes, eventually in their highest good, they will realize that they are fighting an aspect of themselves. But let's not fight that aspect of ourselves anymore. Enough. All right? We're, we're just taking away the mirror altogether. We're just, you know, let the entities and the deities and the relationships and the other people deal with their own journeys. Let's just take it away completely and stop trying to control situations and outcomes. Enough, just for a week, and see what happens. Surrender. And that's not, again, it's not a, well, I'm holier than thou, so I'm sorry I can't engage in this silly behavior. It's not about judgment. It's just about being neutral, just being neutral about it. And see what happens. See if when you, when you have the emotional levels pop up, and all of a sudden you're thrown into depression, you know that it's not going to last very long. You know that. By now, if you're doing your clearing, you know that every once in a while you're going to be blue, and then two hours later, bing! Oh, I'm back. Okay. And it's just integration. That's just stuff coming up and leaving. But it can't leave if you stare at it and judge it and study it and wonder why and engage with it. Just let it go. Just be the presence that you are. It's not be about being present. It's about being presence. Be the divinity that you are. Stop letting these things have a crack at you. Stop taking the bullets. Enough. We're done. So let's just experiment with that. Just for a week and we'll, we'll see how we do. And send me an email if you're like, wow, I didn't push back and that person had nowhere to go. They just got mad at themselves or mad at me or whatever. It's let them go. Let it go. All right. So April is a very potent month. So let's try not to recreate beliefs about anything. Let's try not to recreate those wars and violence within the self. Because, and another thing is, let's try not to recreate beliefs about the shift and ascension. Because I know there's a lot of information out there and a lot of people have attached to some very ancient information and that's all that's all well and good it's all part of the process but let's not expect it to be true for one moment longer <laughs> let's just be open to all kinds of new information because i i myself am a little stunned by what is being revealed to me right now and that's part of the veils going down, is when your higher self starts stepping in and talking and giving you information, you want to be open to it because it feels like, wait a minute, that's not what Metatron said or whatever. And even even when it comes to beings, beautiful beings like Lord Metatron or Archangel Metatron or whatever you want to call that entity, Metatron created some some very intricate geometry in order to retain knowledge in and around this planet so that it wouldn't be damaged. Yes, it got a little hijacked, but so that it wouldn't go away completely during this timeline, during this period of time prior to the shift. And as, as well and good as Metatron's cube, all of those structures are. They have served a purpose. 
And now even Metatron himself is stepping up and saying, okay, I guess you're ready for it now. We, everything is changing. And these are structures that worked and had specific purposes and specific creations and specific ways of holding light intelligence on this planet. But it's changing. Now we're evolving. So try not to cling to things that people taught you in the past. Try not to cling to ancient knowledge. Yes, it's, it's good to familiarize yourself with what has occurred on the planet, but sometimes when we study the past way too much or get obsessed with, you know, this is what the Essenes did, so I'm going to do that, or this is what so-and-so did, so I'm going to do that too. It feels to me like that is a little bit of a safety measure. Oh my goodness, I just got a message that my microphone was wacky for the first 20 minutes of the show. I apologize. I hope you can hear me now. Okay, back to ancient knowledge and attaching to it. There's nothing wrong with that, but I still feel like there's some fear associated with it. And when I hear people saying, well, we're going back to the way things were. We're returning to a state of consciousness that we were in before. It, that doesn't mean that the tools and the things that we used in the last 300,000 years are applicable. Yes, play with them, but let's not cling to them as if they are still truth. The truth is changing. We have to remain flexible. Okay, so enough about that. Let's get into light workers. So, light work. What is, what is a light worker? What is a light server? Light work is not a religion or a cult. Yes, there are a few camps that claim light worker is this or light worker is that, and they tend to isolate themselves within a certain perspective. And I just want to go through a few of those. And again, use your discernment. This isn't about judgment. This is just what I'm I'm just sharing what I'm seeing. Okay, light worker camp number one, <laughs> or just a, a light worker camp that I see kind of um, in that might implode on itself because it's defining itself in very specific terms. Uh, Steve Beckow and his Lightworker Camp. These are the folks that uh, a month or so ago were promised that a light ship was a light ship ride was um, on the agenda. That they were going to get picked up. Certain people within the light their Lightworker group was going were going to get picked up and taken on a spaceship, and they were going to go on this journey for a few days and there was all this explanation, all this channeled material came through and it didn't happen. And I'm not sure what um, uh, excuse or, or, or circumstance did not allow for that to happen, but the thing is, um, Mr. Beckow tends to describe lightworkers as if we all believe, know, feel the same thing, which is not true. Light work is very individual. It is person to person, just, it is, just as it is from collective to collective. It depends on what your focus is, what your mission is, what your journey is. And I personally don't appreciate when people say light workers are this, and they make these sweeping statements. It's very stereotypical. It's very duality. It's very polarized. And I... When it comes to leaving the planet during the shift, I don't understand that at all. I'm here for for the planet and for humanity. What I, I don't see what benefit it would be for me to leave or endanger myself by leaving um, at the height of the shift. It just doesn't make sense to me at all. And again, that's just my opinion. Yes, I know there's going to be much in ET interaction in the future that's available for a lot of people uh, and it's fine if you want to do your own journey and go and you know take a trip we're all traveling nightly anyway but if you want to do it in a more physical way with a group of people just use your discernment when it comes to uh, predictions and promises of people showing up and that light workers are a certain thing and the other thing with, with certain leaders of these lightworker camps is I find that they do tend to kind of insulate 
their uh, opinion with certain beliefs or, or constructs that kind of keep people in their camp. You know, it's almost like a, it's kind of like a marketing technique. And I know I touched on that a couple of weeks ago with my um, discernment article. So I'll, I'll let you explore that on your own. But there are lightworker tribes like lightworker.com or lightworker.org that I find very helpful. They are based on channeling. Uh, lightworker.com is the work of uh, Steve and Barbara Rother, who are like the foster parents of, of the lightworker movement. <laughs> and they've, they've been doing this forever. They're sweet. There is no harm done. They always say, don't follow, don't, you know, it's all about empowerment. They're very sweet. There is nothing threatening there at all. And I always find it funny when people attack them as if the group doesn't know it all. Well, nobody does, so ha. Um, but when people attack them, I'm like, why would you attack Stephen Barber rather? That doesn't make sense at all. They're sweet. They do a, a three-hour broadcast every month. I dare anybody else to put that together in the way that they do. And they're just, they're just doing their thing. You know, I don't understand why people have to judge them. But they're, if you've ever done one of their overlight modality uh, seminars or webinars, um, you will understand that they are they have your highest intentions in mind. They expect you to use your discernment, and they're very sweet. and And the group is very multi dimensional. So some of the stuff that comes through is going to be very literal, and some of it is like, oh, okay, get it, got the bigger picture, connects to something else that I'm working on, and I find that very helpful. So that's lightworker.com. And then lightworker.org has changed. It's, again, a lot of people posting channelings and messages. And it's kind of, for me, and again, this is just my perspective. For me, it's kind of turned into like Facebook for lightworkers. And I, I just can't do it anymore. I just can't look at all the endless channelings and everyone fighting for their opinion or giving each other advice that isn't needed or telling each other what what they're doing right or wrong or this means that or whatever. It's fine if you want to be involved in that. If you need endless amounts of, of channeling and uh, then go for it. I am I'm just done. I'm just done. I'm done with it. I'll, there are a few people that I trust right now doesn't mean that that truth is going to be true later on today or tomorrow or next week. There's a few people that I trust right now and I'll check in every once in a while, but it's, you know, that being involved in um, searching for information really takes you out of yourself. And it takes you out of your true knowing and learning and stepping forward into your own light. So that's just a reminder when you get into big collectives like that, that have chat rooms and stuff like that, it's, it's okay to absolutely connect with people but let's not let's be in control of it and let, not let it control us bottom line okay so the last group i'm going to touch on as far as light workers go and there are thousands of them uh, with very different facets of this sparkling jewel that is light work one of the facets that I want to touch on is George Stankov's work with uh, StankovUniversalLaw.com. George is, George is interesting. So last fall, he was saying he was going to be the first Ascended Master on the 1111. And he's formed, his tribe is called the Planetary Ascension Team. And he has a, a bunch of folks who are very dedicated to George and that construct that that he has created about the planetary ascension team and we are the ones we are the ones and a lot a lot of light worker groups say we are the ones we are the ones because we are uh, you know light work is being awake and aware and and again awake and aware is not about discovering what's going on with secret government it's way beyond that it's this is cosmic universal divine consciousness that we're talking about and yes all of all of the light workers definitely are the ones at the moment not forever 
that are doing a lot of work and amplifying the planets, ascension path and timeline, which I'll talk about in a little while. But when it comes to saying our group is better, smarter, more informed, those other people are crazy, that does not resonate with me at all. I That seems very dualistic to me, very polarized, and I'm not sure why George took that direction. Granted, he did not become the first Ascended Master on the 11.11, and the 11.11 brought in all kinds of different things that we were not anticipating. So, uh, yeah, he was very humbled by that experience, but now he's kind of picked it up again and is attacking other people in at length <laughs> on his website and having these conversations with people that write in emails and say, you know, this person's crazy, what do you think? And then, you know, he agrees and goes on about why they're so crazy or whatever. Um, and as a woman who writes about the shift and gives regular articles and regular guidance about the ascension process, I did not appreciate um, the recent comment that these women giving their updates are all like we're all in the in the same category, and this this again this far and wide stereotype that any woman who writes about the shift is in this this la di da light worker camp, and we are the real ones that know what's going on on the planetary ascension team and just ignore them, et cetera, et cetera. I don't get it. I don't understand why he went in that direction. I haven't been reading him for very long. Um, my connection to him was with Susan Carroll. And Susan, Susan and I have a very interesting uh, connection. And we're going to explore that again very soon. Um, and my newsletter subscribers uh, know what's going on with that. But he, he uh, because she stopped answering his emails, he like just went and trashed her as if she was just some normal, deluded ch person who was channeling. And I, I don't understand, even if you don't agree with, with something that people are channeling, why, why can't you respect what is occurring, that people are taking all kinds of different directions with this ascension process. I just didn't understand why he went in that direction and why he continues to be so scathing uh, when it comes to reviewing other people's work. So every once in a while he'll touch on somebody that he does like, which typically are males, which is another thing I'm kind of like, hmm, that's interesting. But I'm, uh, you know, he he confirms when when I have information come through. I'm always curious to see what's going on in in George Land because sometimes he's like this has occurred and everything and and he always makes it sound like he's the only one who knows, which is kind of interesting. And I try to like pull information together a little bit, but. Uh, it's it's interesting. So so when you're visiting people's sites and they're saying light this is true light work and if you're brand new to the light worker thing, please don't think that everybody is like whomever you are uh reading right now. There's a lot of information out there. Let's just use our discernment and if it looks like somebody is just trashing everybody else except them, um, I kind of question what's going on there. It doesn't mean it's wrong. I mean, George is certainly not evil in any way, shape, or form. He's just, you know, he's, you know, he's 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 an old man. <laughs> he's got his opinions, and that's fine. And I love him anyway. But I just wish he would lighten up on this this judgment of everybody else. It's like, oh, I, I don't understand that at all. And especially when it comes to Susan and the brilliant work that she's done and the the consistency of her information and guidance is, um, I don't know, I find her a true light. 
and a sister. So there it is. All right. So uh, so George is is another person who who again has created a um, a tribe of light work, and you're welcome to join any of these tribes, not join any of these tribes. I, I suggest um, doing the collective meditation, but just watch it when it comes to loyalty and kind of falling into someone else's light construct because it is you know you can get completely wrapped up in 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 someone i mean some people will absolutely follow everything that george cabasilis has to say and i've i've run across this too as a counselor where people base their whole life their whole their whole structure of ascension on something that someone else has created or said and they will you know, not pay their taxes not do anything and it fully expect that the earth is going to pop into a star by march next year and and not live their lives that's the main thing whether you believe it or not whether you think that the shift is going to be huge or not regardless of my opinion that I think it's going to be something unique for a lot of people I I still don't feel that you should shut down your life and wait for it or or expect that yes I am going to be an ascended master any minute now and completely avoid uh, being presence right now and communicating and interacting with the experience that's available right now another <laughs> and this is kind of a big one for me anything that's galactic federation of light me no resonate it doesn't it never has it always just made my teeth itch a little bit and it doesn't i i don't want to judge it too much because I know that a lot of people like that and are enjoying that and are taking that journey but when I hear Sheldon Nidal talking about people being taken into pods and inner earth because the surface of the earth is just going to be too harsh and, and there's going to be too much chaos and that's how they're going to ascend is this this technical ascension where you're put in a pod and transformed along with your pets in a room that looks just like your house I you know it's fine if you want to take that journey but I'm I I am all for organic ascension I mean I'm not attached to my body vehicle in that way for example I'm moving to Mount Shasta and if Mount Shasta decides to awaken and explode in the volcano lava flows all over my body so be it i mean that's that's my choice i decided to go there so uh, let it let it happen it doesn't mean i'm not going to ascend you know there's all this fear about ascend or won't ascend i really i don't know i think we all just have to do the best that we can and if the best you can do is is following galactic Feder federation of light then okay I'm just saying have a little perspective on whether or not that is light work. That is following someone else and listening to messages of soon, soon, soon is not, or, or listening to specific broadcasts about this is what is happening and we are doing this, as if they're taking responsibility for every race that is involved in this galactic battle. It just does not feel right to me and let's remember our our beloved rob cutter from a couple of years ago talking about soul harvest this is i don't know if that agenda has been taken off the table completely when the steve beckow thing popped up i was like whoa that's interesting and it reminded me of of rob's message from a couple of years ago where he had an, an entity come in that said yeah, we're we're expecting millions to get on these ships. And it was an intention, I felt, to take people off the planet because the planet's ascension is very much attached to our resonation. So getting a bunch of awakened people onto ships would be an excellent way to, to prevent that. Um, I don't feel that that 
can occur anymore, although I dreamt about it a couple weeks ago, and maybe that was it leaving, where there was a big sky full of geometry and light ships, and everyone had a bracelet on, and it was kind of like Logan's Run, you know, where you where you uh, have the crystal in your hand, and everyone's like uh, going home. Everyone had these bracelets on. They were just laying down on the ground waiting for these light ships to beam them up. And I like ripped off my bracelet and started walking away and hiding behind trees. It was this big dramatic dream. And I wondered, is that still available? Is it still even possible at this point? And then I realized how many people are like really attached to Galactic Federation of Light. And that seems to be dwindling. Because the messages have been saying, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that very soon for a couple of years now. I don't know how long Sheldon or, or anybody else has been around doing that. But when I got exposed to them, I was like, wow, that's, I just, I don't feel it. I just don't feel it. It's just too, it's not that it's too weird because I love the bizarre stuff. But it's not, it just doesn't seem wise. It doesn't seem in alignment with the ascension process that I perceive. So use your discernment, just saying. Uh, another thing about uh, lightworker discernment, the endless YouTube videos that talk about how sad and lonely starseeds and indigos and crystals and lightworkers are and that you're so special and you're from off-world and I just don't feel that they're helping. And, and those things are old. You have to remember no, I don't think anybody's making those anymore. I hope that they aren't. I mean, that was seemed to be rampant back in like 09 and, and 2010. But, okay, it, everybody's moving in to a certain stage of light work in their light body. But this idea that we're isolated from society, it feels isolated. But we're moving into oneness. I don't get the the you are sad you are lonely you are feeling this of course you are it's evolution your body is being blasted with photonic light <laughs> your crystalline structure which is in between your cells is starting to expand yeah you're gonna feel weird you're gonna feel completely disconnected re rebalanced uh, you know steve rother just had a, a rebalancing class and the first thing they said it's like okay now you have an extra arm and an extra leg and you have, you have to learn how to work with them. You've been standing on two. Now you've got three. You're like, whoa. So this is, of course, uh, you know, everybody on a certain level is feeling that way. It's just that we're aware of it. But I don't feel it's helpful when YouTube videos are telling you how sad you are <laughs> or how separate you are. And that, you know, you must get together and, and join the collective. And then nobody does. So let's be sure that we're moving and stepping into our light and not isolating anymore. Let's just come out now. We've seen a preview of, of what's happening in the near future. This is the time to serve. This is what we're talking about. I know I talk about this a lot, but this is really time to come out so that other people are not surprised by our, our wisdom and our guidance when things start to occur. And our lightworker missions are starting to change. So here's, here's the good stuff. Clarity, collective actions. Please get together in groups. Even if it's three of you sitting in your living room, time to get together. And if you don't know how to do light work or grid work, which is, like they say, firing the grid, the grid is, is the crystalline grid is in place around the earth. Some people say it's in. I feel that it's like a big net around and it's actually created through the the heart center connecting with the earth of all of humanity. And as we start to kind of come online, our our little diamond heart consciousness starts to anchor and light up that grid. So when they talk about firing the grid, that's straight from the heart center crystalline grid activate sending the light out through that grid and the grid is actually um, uh, Christine Day calls it a big jeweled mandala of hearts of us and it's humanity connecting to the oneness you know that the crystalline grid is is the oneness that we're talking about and we can 
talk about, um, it, we just need to be honest with our intentions. You know, when it comes to all of this light work, getting together and meditating, get, joining a group, yes, use your discernment, but tap in. Be sure that you tap in. Because we're moving into a time where we're going, where we're anticipating our success now. Let's anticipate the success. What will we need? What is humanity going to need? We're like a lightworker core now, like Peace Corps. Only we're lightworker core, assisting people that have that whose reality has been blown. When the financial thing melts down, I don't know if anyone's listened to David Wilcox's interview with Drake. Whether or not you resonate, let's just get some perspective. I don't know what other people have anticipated for financial meltdown. It seems like there's a lot of fear about, oh my gosh, there's no food and they're going to do this and they're going to do that and you won't have access and holy crap, no internet. I think it's the best thing that could happen for humanity and I'm sticking with that. If it, the financial turnover appears to, and take a look for yourself, tap in and take a look, feel into it and see what's actually happening there. It's not the the powers that truly are, not the powers that were, are creating a system to try to make it as easy as possible. Yeah, there's going to be some scramble, and think of all the people who are not going to know what is going down. And all of a sudden they think this, they think that, all the fear and doom folks are going to see military and think they're coming to get us or take away my rights instead of assist us and make sure that everyone's taken care of. That is the kind of perspective that you need to open up to. And I I implore you to take a peek at David Wilcox writing in the last couple of posts and just familiarize yourself with a different perspective so in case it does unfold in the way that he's him and, and Drake and, and other folks are saying, uh, you know, Ben Fulford and, and folks like that who have been deeply involved in this for a long time, if it does unfold the way that they're saying it's going to unfold, please be open to it and not get polarized about what things mean because there's going to, we're going to have to use a huge amount of discernment between what's being presented as real and what is true when it comes to the media and the people around us proclaiming that horrible things are happening and they just cannot see the end product at all. Please take a look at the future outcome and anticipate that success and be that anchor right in your own community. This is not about an egoic, I I know it all. It's as simple as a neighborhood organization. These are the folks that you're going to be with when things get shut down whether it's the, the grid from, from electrical and uh, interference from, from a solar flare or whether it's the grid going down because we're having this massive changeover from the corporate structure. It's not, a, it's not about the fear of that. It's about, all right, I, I see what's coming and I'm not going to wait and then be, you know, henny penny, I know what's happening be positive about this. These are the changes that we need. These are the changes that have to occur. So instead of going from a a I know it all perspective, let's go from a authenticity. It's not about the fear. It's about that subtle getting to know everybody right now. That means befriend your police, befriend the people in your neighborhood, befriend your local leaders. Be the compassionate person, not the pushback demanding person. Be the person who is open, who understands truly. If you do understand what is occurring on the planet right now, start connecting with the people that you are going to be hanging out with in those couple of weeks. And don't wall yourself up when that occurs. When you... (laughs) just some perspective if you're in the suburbs and you think wow if the if the the electricity goes off or money's not available or all this stuff starts crumbling boy the inner city is going to be a mess those people are going to loot and those people and everything this is not there is no those people this is all us and and trust me that 
people in inner city uh, have a much stronger sense of of neighborhood and community than than you know. So here's the thing. Everything starts going nuts. You know that the inner city folks or people in a certain neighborhood or the old person down the street, doesn't matter where you are, does not have money to store you know, emergency food and water and you know that that exists in your town, in your city, in your area, help them out, man, take them in. This is about humanity getting together, not being afraid of each other. It's, it's ridiculous when I, when I hear about stuff like that. I'm, I'm just like, well, what are you going to do about it? The, let's help each other out. So if we can anticipate the success and we can anticipate the needs of our community, that in itself becomes part of the lightworker mission, this evolution of lightworker mission, where we are stepping up. All of a sudden, we are, you're not in the state of eternal loneliness that everyone's been telling you you're in. You are that leader. And it's not a matter of, it's not leadership by dictatorship. This is, okay, grab a couple people. Doesn't matter if they meditate or not, who cares? Just grab a couple of fellow humans that want to help and do it and, and do the work. And it's not about fighting it's about being loving introducing yourself there's no fighter in form in this dynamic what is your gift or your skill right now anything that you can do to unite your neighborhood and self-sufficiency and peace is going to help later on so let's just get there instead of waiting for things to occur take a look at what is going to occur we have a lot of people whose reality is going to be turned upside down it's fine. And you know darn well that one neutral person resonating at a higher frequency affects everyone around you. So you're going to step into that situation and be that calm. Okay, let's make a list. What do we have? What do we need? Who do we have to take care of? And do it. Let it unfold. And I really see that, that, that light worker core idea is where we're going with this right now. And the other, you know, very important things are going to start to uh, occur with all of this and we're going to be much happier about uh, helping out our communities. Okay, I want to get to the the timeline convergence idea because I did promise that I would touch on this. The, The future timeline idea, okay, so... The way that you affect anything is by changing the future. You create a future outcome, you create a parallel timeline, and then you go back and you experience it. To alter the past, you change the future. Now, if you picture a timeline as a big spiral, very similar to DNA, there's a big hint for you, the sequence loops around and it passes back close to the previous loop. Now it's not going to meet, it's not going to do the snake swallowing its own tail thing where there is no evolution. <laughs> and that's that's another big hint for you. As the spiral of time, this, this sequence passes by where it started at. You get shadows that present choices. Either you you're always going to step forward a little bit, but you might repeat the same pattern. We see this in our lives where it's like, oh, here's that thing coming up again. Oh, what am I going to do this time? And you can repeat it, and then it shows up again, shows up again. Well, it's the same with these huge galactic timelines that we're working with or with the timeline with the ascension of Gaia. So if you're on the timeline, the next loop looks like a parallel timeline right next door to you. But it's the same sequence, just expanding outward, just taking that cycle to alter a previous loop. That would be the the illusion of past. You change the loop that you're on in the future. You change the loop. So, to, again, to alter the past, you change the future. You create a new spiral, a new timeline or outcome, and you set it right next to the old one. The new timeline has the experience that you desire. You manifest its creation and then you go back 
to the previous loop and jump timelines at a certain point to enjoy the experience of your new future unfolding. It provides an alternate timeline as a possibility. So when we were looking at Gaia's intention to ascend, there was the timeline of doom destruction, which has occurred before. We've seen this happen with other planets. Maldek, you know, the asteroid belt hanging out there is one very clear example of what can occur. So when you look at a doom timeline and you look at Gaia's intention to ascend, she's like, I've had enough, you know, a third, third time's a charm, let's go. She sets the intention and projects this future outcome. Source, humanity, the inhabitants of that future, that possible future timeline, say, yeah, I would like to experience that. Um, I'm looking at this doom timeline doesn't look so good. <laughs> it kind of sucks. So how about we create a ascension timeline where everything raises the frequency and then we, we slowly are part of this galactic cleansing and this universal evolution. And that's decided on many, many levels above planetary as well. But when it comes to these two timelines, let's just talk about Gaia. So Gaia's got this intention. Look, I could ascend and this would be it. And this is what humanity looks like. And that humanity of that future, that future soul group sees what could occur. And they say, okay, we're going to create a timeline where this occurs. You create the timeline. You line up the spiral right next to the other one. Two coils within coil, wheels within wheels, sound familiar? And you s then go back and live the timeline that was occurring, and then that parallel timeline starts to amplify. And your purpose, going back as a future soul with this intention, you can incarnate and go through all of this process and amplify that new timeline throughout your incarnations. And this has been occurring for 300,000 years, where this, this last bit of it starts to get very important, whether or not we're going to make it. And in 1987, you got to make that jump, where it's like, yes, absolutely going to happen. And you jump to timeline one, which is the ascension timeline. Now, timelines are very, fr there's infinite amounts of timelines for personal experience. I am just talking about the planetary consciousness ascending, humanity ascending along with that. But we have to remember that our experience is happening because of Gaia. It, it, we like to think that it's all about humanity, but it isn't. So this is, this is a rampant, rampant experience in the experimentation of realities. There are infinite possibilities for experience, different versions of timelines, parallel realities, opportunities to jump, play with different variations of consciousness. Everybody is able to jump timelines. We do it all day long, like 333,000 times since we started this broadcast. We've all been beep, 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 bop, 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 bop. And it's just depending on where, what direction your thoughts are going in. And we see this with the law of traction. We see this with intentions where you have to envision the future is already already exists and you move toward it. This is exactly what we're talking about, that future self creating a timeline of a different experience and then you do everything possible to energize it. And this is, that's a, a microcosm of what has occurred with this ascension timeline. There are many beings source itself the planet the galaxy there's all these different beings the, the solar light there's all of these different beings involved in amplifying this timeline because it seemed like a really cool idea which it was so good going everybody so the collectives who create an alternate timeline uh, like a planetary consciousness provide a range of experience for beings around in and around their surface if the consciousness decides to create an ascension timeline, then the future inhabitants of that planet can create a timeline and then go back and incarnate. And that's why a lot of the shift feels like remembering the shift. I don't know if, well, some of you have had that experience. It feels like 
remembering, oh, and this is when I did this, and this is when I did that. And I know that a few of you are going, yeah, exactly. That's why, because we've already created it. We're just experiencing the unfolding of how this occurs. That doesn't mean that it's set in stone. It means that the, the major timeline of doom, fear versus ascension, love, were, were set. And that is the last experience of duality on the planet, that harsh polarized duality. And of course, different versions of uh, different levels of duality exist all the way up the dimensions. But when we when we move into this triality, now we're we're getting into seeing, okay, ascension timeline, okay, doom timeline, and now here I am in the middle going, okay, let it unfold, let it unfold. Let me amplify what's in the highest interests of all concerned. We have to be very flexible about that as we go through these timelines. You know, there's only so much push and shove and control you can deal with when you're trying to let go of push up and control on the planet. Do you see what I mean? So highest interests of all, but you have to really be in the moment and in the flow of what's occurring here because we are experiencing something that we've already created. And all of the, the star seeds and the indigos and the crystals and the ETs and all the beings that have incarnated here are all on mission. We're all doing this together. We, th we think it would be really cool, and so here we are. And we're going to see how fast we can do it without destroying the planet because a giant frequency jump, of course, implodes everything, so we don't want that. So uh, when... Uh, okay, so we know about the planetary consciousness. I'm sorry. So the new timeline then converges with a set point in the spiral of time when factors will amplify the progression so we've got these little jumps going on, and the linear time continuum dissolves completely for timeline one. You're not getting cause and effect anymore. You are entering that spiral of time where you, you get it. You're moving into oneness. You're moving into the divine cycles instead of these false illusionary structures of linear time. And that's why the Mayan calendar ends during shift. There, there is no more measurement. Cosmic factors, including the galactic cycle, which is 225 million years, come to a close in December this year. We're done. It's a rare moment, that, but it can be utilized to help huge changes, and nobody wants another 225 million year loop. Enough already. The Convergen Point provides multiple opportunities for jumping to timeline creations of your or someone else's making. So let's be very specific as to which timeline you are on. When it comes to the lightwork organizations that I mentioned earlier, let, let's be sure that we're on our own version of what we want to experience because it's getting wide open. This is about, talk about creativity during the shift. We're not limited to <laughs> painting and music and dance they're all wonderful expressions but we're talking about creating ourselves stepping into our creator selves and that doesn't have to do with domination of the self it has to do with being the divine presence that we are and this is what's available right now so use your use your discernment when it comes to making decisions about who's right who's wrong you know who's right you are you, your higher self, is 100% correct about your journey because it's yours. Yes, there's collective things going on. Yes, you can join a collective. Absolutely nothing wrong with doing light work or firing the grid. Just make sure that that's not all you're doing. Make sure that that's not all you're expressing unless that's your mission. If it's your mission to sit 24-7 in meditation, Source love you. Have at it. That's great. It's beautiful. If you can find a way to do that and you want to do it, go ahead. But you don't have to. There's no have to in this situation. This is about very unique uh, levels of creativity. And for, for those of us who have incarnated all along this timeline and gone through all of these journeys... In and out. I mean, some of mine are, are dimensional as, as a Pleiadian guide. 
all of these these journeys you know over and over again and and watching and learning and experiencing again it is just an experience you know we get very attached to our journeys and and even our past life journeys that they are the truth you know and it's like well that's the truth about what you've experienced but what does it have to do with the truth of of what you are right now this divine presence this source presence that we are all embracing right now and i feel that that is that true light worker light server sense is being that presence and expressing it in the most authentic and strong way that you can as an individual and if you absolutely are hung up on what is my mission what is my purpose help that's all you need to do help out assist any way that you can it doesn't have to be thousands and thousands of people it could be taking care of the poor folks in your town or writing or volunteering for some organization that you're just crazy about it could be about starting your own thing it could be about transforming business it could be about creating free energy but let's just move in to this anticipation of success because it is coming and it is our perspective our higher perspective of seeing how beautiful and good it is that chaos has finally returned where we are free from moment to moment instead of everything being so rigid and so lizard brain and repetitive let's move in to that perspective of anticipating the success and be ready for it and in the flow and feeling free it's going to be beautiful i promise you it's going to be great let's get into that mindset and amplify it right in our own live stream and enjoy it absolutely and if you're having any trouble with your ascension journey give give me a chance <laughs> i'm i'm very good if you want to have these conversations one on one you're confused about something you're trying to make up your mind about something you need somebody to bounce something off you have an extremely emotional thing that you just can't get out of you are absolutely confused about the ascension process and don't know what the heck's going on go ahead and and have a session with me it's 90 minutes sometimes i talk for 3 hours to people and it's beautiful i i don't care it time is time is time whatever as long as you give me some money up front because it has to be an even energy exchange and you know i'm broke most of the time <laughs> so if if anybody needs assistance with their journey go ahead and you know what for everybody listening on, on the radio show go ahead and book yourself on the returning client rate it's 77 bucks for 90 minutes if you're on my website under services you go to ascension counseling go ahead and and take advantage of the $77 rate it's fine go ahead and do it and if i completely blow your mind by the end of the session and you're feeling wonderful you can give me a tip <laughs> but in the meantime that is my offering of service and i really wish everybody a beautiful week this is a great time that we're moving into we've got all these little activations coming next weekend we've got a few more weeks until egoic levels just kind of you know step back chill out in the meantime try that lower level contract it is great for busting up lower level stuff and giving you some perspective and i wish you all a beautiful and creative week <laughs> This has been Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. For more information on Ascension or Ascension Counseling, visit Sandra on the web at www.sandrawalter.com.